In today's session, we'll be talking about the trial balance, a chapter 3 in IGCC accounting. We'll again start by discussing the double entry bookkeeping system. In double entry bookkeeping system, we saw that there are two types of entries for every single transaction, a debit entry and a credit entry. Similarly, for all our transactions, there will be equal amount of debit and credit entries of, the equal, val of equal values. This means that if I add up all my debit entries and all my credit entries together, they should be of, the equal, of equal amounts. And if the sum of my debit entries is equal to the sum of my credit entries, this means that my books of accounts have arithmetical accuracy. So let's note that down. So if my debit and credit are equal, it represents arithmetical accuracy. To test for this arithmetical accuracy, we create the trial balance. The trial balance is made up of two words, trial and balance. Trial represents the fact that we will be testing uh, for our arithmetical accuracy and balance refers to the fact that we will be using all the balances from a ledger accounts to check for arithmetical accuracy. So as I just told you that we will be using balances from all the ledger accounts to be checking arithmetical accuracy. This means we will first need to extract our balances from the ledger accounts. So let's start by going to the ledger account. So over here I have made six ledger accounts. There will be many more in real life situations but for now for understanding purposes we have made six. So over here I have capital, bank, machinery, bank loan, interest received and wages account. So let's start by balancing each of them. So first of all over here we have capital account. To know more about how to balance ledger accounts, you can refer to chapter 2, which is the previous module, and that's it. So let's continue with this. So here we have the capital account. In capital account, on the credit side, we have $1,000, and on the debit side, we have nothing. This means that I'll have to add a balance of $1,000 on my debit side for my capital account to balance. So let's add over here balance carried forward of 1000 on the capital account on the debit side and this means now our total will be equal to $1000 in our capital account so in the next month in February on February 1st my credit star side will start with a balance of $1000 which is brought down from the debit side of the last month so this right here. Moving on to our next ledger account, the bank balance. So in a bank account, we have several entries on both our debit and credit sides. So let's add them up individually. So if I add all my debit balances in the bank account, which is 1000, 70 and 5, I get 1075 as my debit total. If I add my credit balances, uh, credit uh, entries then I get a total of $80 this means that my debit side is more than my credit side that means I have to add a balance amount on my credit side for my bank account to balance so let's do that over here so first of all let's calculate what's the difference between our debit and credit sides so my debit side is 1075 and credit side is only 80. This means there's a difference of $995. So I'll add a difference, uh, I'll add a balance of $995 on my credit side. So here I go and add balance carried forward of $995 on my credit side. So now my balances are balanced. Both my debit side and credit side add up to $1,075. And now this credit balance over here will pass on to next month on February 1st as the balance brought down. So this is for February 1st, a bank account will have 995 debit balance. So, okay. so these were our balances of bank and capital, bank and capital. Our capital has a credit balance. At the start of the month and bank has a debit balance at the start of the month similarly we'll be calculating for machine machinery bank loan interest received 
and wages accounts. So you can pause the video and try it on your own before we try it together as an exercise. So hopefully you paused the video and tried it. Uh, let's move on uh, by doing it together. So over here we have the machine. We have a machinery account which has fifty dollars on the debit side, but nothing on the credit side. That means we'll have to add balance carried forward of fifty dollars on our credit side. Now our balances are equal. Uh, both my debit and credit side add up to fifty dollars. Now this balance carried forward will be brought down on February 1st as $50 on the debit side. So this is how we balance the machinery account. Let's move on to the next one, bank loan account. Bank loan is a liability. Over here we have $70 of bank loan on our credit side. So we'll need to add a balance carried forward of $70 on the debit side to balance it. So we pick this up from here. We have it. And just a second. perfect. So we had seventy dollars over here. Now our balance, now our totals of debit and credit add up to seventy dollars. Perfect. Now I'll take my balance brought down and uh, put it under bank loan account. On February first, the seventy dollars will be brought down on the credit side as the opening balance of $70. So we even balance the bank loan account which is a liability which at the start of the month has a credit balance. Moving on to interest received account, this is the interest you, re you received from the savings you have in your bank uh, which is an income. So over here you have $5 credit on the credit side. So you'll have to add balance carried forward of $5 on the debit side. Let's add that, $5. So now your totals of debit side and credit side add up to $5. Now this balance carried forward will be brought, brought down on February 1st as $5 on the credit side. Now our last account needs to be balanced, which is the wages account, which is an expense. So over here we have $30 on the debit side. So I need to add thirty dollars balance on my credit side to balance it. So let's do that. Thirty dollars balance carried forward. Now our totals for debit and credit add up to thirty dollars. Awesome. Now we'll take balance brought down. So this thirty dollars over here will be brought down on the start of the month of February of thirty dollars. Perfect. As a debit balance. So now we have balanced all our accounts and these let's highlight our balances. Just a second. Let's take a thicker marker. So we have one over here. Second one. Capital bank machinery bank loan interest received and wages. So we'll be adding all these balances, we'll be taking all these balances and segregating them in our trial balance. So let's do that. So this is the format of our trial balance. Your trial balance should start with the title, which is this, right over here. So the title for your trial balance should be trial balance at whatever date your trial balance is made on such as this one's made on 31st January 2021. Usually trial balances are made on a monthly or annual basis or quarterly. Uh, it depends on how frequently you balance your ledgers. Depending on that, uh, you will make your trial balances. So firstly, uh, let's take a capital account, which is over here. Capital account, let's add it in the D. So yeah. We are trial balances four main columns, details, folio, debit and credit. The details column you write the account whose balances you are writing. Folio is redundant as of now because now is it in our syllabus and it's becoming more redundant as we keep moving on to computers for our bookkeeping rather than papers. So you don't need folio.
to know on what page is your account, how you extracted your accounts from. And debit and credit shows whether your uh, details, the account that you added to the detail, had a debit or a credit balance at the end of the month. So over here, we'll start by adding all these balances of the six ledgers to our child balance. So firstly, we have capital account, which has a credit balance of $1,000. So here we write capital and $1,000 credit. Then we have a bank account which has a debit balance of $995. So let's write that of $995. Perfect. Then we have a machinery account which is an asset which has a debit balance of $50. So let's also make a note of that. Then we have a bank loan account over here, which has a credit balance of $70. So let's make a note of that now. bank loan $70 credit that could come right over here then we have two more accounts interest received account and wages interest received account is an income so that will have a credit balance of $5 so we'll write that over here interest received of $5 Then we have wages, which is a uh, expense, so that will have a debit balance of thirty dollars. So over here, wages, thirty dollars. Perfect. So I made my trial balance. Now what we need to do is add all the debit sides, all the debit side entries, and all the credit side entries, and see whether they balance each other. So let's add up all our debit side entries. So 995 plus 50 plus 30, which adds up to 1075. Then let's add up all our credit balances. 1000 plus 70 plus 5, which also add up to 1075. Oh yeah, great. So both our debit and credit balances are equal to each other. This means that our trial balance has arithmetical accuracy, which is great. So that is what our trial balance is. That's it. So our trial balance has two main purposes. The first one we saw was arithmetical accuracy. The important part to note over here is that our trial balance is not part of our double entry bookkeeping system. It is a separate system that is used to check for arithmetical accuracy and has one more purpose which is that it is useful in making our financial statements. So that's the two uses of preparing our financial, of preparing our trial balance, arithmetical accuracy and useful in preparing financial statements because then you can easily take out figures from the trial balance and put them in our financial statements. We'll look at that in chapters around 8 or 9. Thank you.